Hello, Virtue here again. I'm going to do the second part of uh, Liverpool hauntings. Um, I went up there in April 2016 um, with the Ghost Club, which I'm a member of. The Ghost Club is one of the oldest paranormal societies, I think, in the world, actually. It was formed in the 1860s. It can name drop like you wouldn't believe. They've had, I don't know if they've been chairman or members or who they are, but they've had like Charles Dickens was a member, uh, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, people like that. It's just, it, I think it was formed in Cambridge as part of the university because they wanted to um, explore the paranormal back then. Um, it's a really good group. I really enjoy it. It's They do a monthly um, event and uh, they have people talking about all sorts of things to do basically with the dead. You know, it's, it's paranormal researchers and people sort of doing uh, investigations of hauntings and, it, it, you know, they'll cross over into things like what I do, which is sort of communicating with the dead it, it's really interesting stuff they do a lot of legends a lot of sort of um english sort of history it's 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 an interesting thing anyway um they had a trip up to liverpool and you know as i said i moved from australia to london four years ago and i always said that i was going to explore the uk and of course i haven't done it i've just sort of it's cheaper to go to Spain, you know. You go to Barcelona for twenty five quid. It's it's really ridiculous. But um, anyway, apart from the the cost of exploring the UK, let's just move on. So what what they did was they sort of I went I went my own um, and I don't normally do these things. I don't normally go in these sort of really organised sort of. Here's the itinerary. You're going to do whatever you know. You have to, what's on this list, basically. But look, I had a really good time. I was really surprised. There were lovely people. I was made to feel so welcome, and we just had a lot of fun. But it was sort of at the time, as I've said, if you've seen some of these other clips, you'll know that what happened to me is when I moved from Australia to London or the UK. Um, I suddenly was inundated with the dead and my abilities that I'd had that was quite average in, in Australia just absolutely went through the roof because UK is so damn haunted, it's ridiculous. And I didn't go to Liverpool to find dead people, believe me. I went to have a break from London and ended up having all these sort of paranormal um, encounters and it was really weird because I was with the Ghost Club members and they're really interested in this stuff but I was still in this stage where I was trying to sort of come to terms with what was happening to me all the time because it was just beyond anything I'd had to deal, deal with before and um, so what because it it, it the, the the interest in this 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 uh, three days away from you know, up in Liverpool was was focused on you know we had paranormal investigators coming and sort of showing us sites and telling us all these things that had happened and you know shit about EVPs and and things like that but the funniest thing was because that they're talking about either legends or what sort of gadgetry stuff not that I've really gotten it I don't I don't mind paranormal investigators I'm really not that upset by them um, you know I think they're sort of forging a way ahead somehow and you know, I don't have a problem with them but while they're telling me about this stuff I'm actually having the real thing happen to me anyway this first image is um, St Luke's uh, Liverpool's a lovely place I really really enjoyed Liverpool couldn't understand a fucking word they were saying because the accents are so thick. But they were lovely people and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, 
this is St Luke's and this is one of the places we went up to have a look at. This is a church. It's absolutely beautiful. It was bombed in some air raid in the 1940s-ish somewhere and it's basically just been left the way it is but it still is a beautiful, beautiful building. Um, what's left of it and when I walked up the steps because there's sort of this grand sort of staircase going up to the actual building you can't get into it because it's all apparently it's quite dangerous excuse me um, so there's bits falling off the roof and you know whatever's left of it so you can't actually get into it but you certainly got a good view from around the sort of fence line of it. But it's got these great sweeping steps. And as I walked up the sweeping steps, I felt I was just overwhelmed by this horrible sadness. It was just really, really thick. And it's like it, 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 that sort of an empathetic thing that I get with the dead. I feel their pain and it's it is so different and so other from mine because I was in a good mood I mean it was sunny it was lovely I was having a great time um, and I contacted whilst I was listening to the paranormal investigators talking about the church I sort of pulled back a bit and I spoke in well spoke you know communicated in the way you do um, with this entity who said his name was John. Apparently he had some sort of drug problem and about 10 years ago he collapsed on the steps. Um, I guess from some sort of drug overdose, I'm not really sure. And he was taken to hospital but died. But he was still on the steps because he was frightened to move on and the reason he was frightened to move on was that he thought that anything passed where he was. Because what happens, I, I, I've explained it, I'll, I'll explain it again. When you get a trapped spirit, they can't leave their life because they've got issues in life that they're scared about or they are scared to face the dead world. Sometimes they don't know they're dead, but the problem is, is that if you could imagine, there's like a veil, or a lot of people call it that, it's probably the best description of it, and it's like they face that veil looking into life all the time because they just don't understand for whatever reason or they weren't prepared to die, or they don't know they were dead, and they don't turn around and realise that they've got to go to the other bit, which is the dead bit, because that's where they need to be. They don't need to be in between. This John was really worried because he'd led quite a difficult life, and he'd been involved with drugs, alcohol, I don't know what else. I didn't really ask because what's the point, really? He was really scared that if he turned around and faced death, because he knew he was dead, but he was really scared that if he turned around and faced death that he would be punished. You know, I guess it's sort of a, I don't know, Christian thing. If you did the wrong thing, you might go to hell. Um... So I'm standing there getting all of this sort of washing through me uh, about what his problem is and, and, and trying to tell him that, you know, the dead world is a lot more forgiving. Things like drugs and alcohol are not really a problem. We all have, we all fuck up in life. I mean, nobody's perfect. And, you know, I, I, I tried to remind him that he had family in the dead world, which is what I do a lot when I cross people over. I tend to be a bit a bit tricky with them and I just start talking about I get their dead, their their dead that have passed over and start sort of talking to them about them and they tend to 
weaken and then cross over. I mean, it's a really weird thing what I do. I, I actually quite like doing it. I mean, with my spiritual ability, I, I, I guess I have quite a complex, high spiritual ability. But I really don't mind doing this kind of work. I, I, it's almost like my community work. And I like the fact that I pass these people over and give them some peace. It sort of gives me some peace because I had such a shit bloody upbringing. I really did. It was just damn awful. And I can understand when these people are concerned about, you know, passing over to the dead world that they are frightened. Um, but anyway, the happy end to, to John was he did. He just went. I, I talked him into, and I can be quite persuasive when I need to be. I talked to him about his family and he couldn't resist um but you know i know it'll be all right anyway on to the next one okay this thing is um the giant grasshopper it's not a giant grasshopper um liverpool is on the other side we went over the mersey river and we were in Birkenhead, which is opposite Liverpool. And this was an old 1800s-ish pump. And there's a road tunnel that goes underneath the Mersey um, from Liverpool to Birkenhead. And this was one of the old pumps that used to keep the water out of the tunnel way back when. Um, we went there with this lovely paranormal investigator who was, yeah, he, that, that, he was just amazing. And while he's telling me about this sort of, I mean, I ended up zoning out because I ended up listening to this entity as opposed to this poor man that was trying to tell me things. Um, I do apologise for that. Anyway. Eventually I worked out, it took a little while for him to sort of, this entity to start talking to me because they can be, you do net, sometimes they just zone into them a bit. And I found out his name was Kevin, I think. That's about as close as I could get to it. Um, excuse me. The, he fell to his death in this huge pump. Now, I don't know because we never got inside to see what this huge Victorian pump looked like. Apparently, it's still all there, but doesn't work. I don't. It's just there. And apparently, he had an accident where he fell into the pump and was killed. He said to me things... Like he was, he was really angry about that he'd made a split second decision. Like just, just a split second, and it plummeted him to his death. It, you know, I mean, this can get a bit rough, and I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it like it is because this, this is basically the dead world. This is what it's like. He said that dying was a relief. Um, I seem to get a picture of him spending about an hour in agony and that dying was a relief but he was still angry because he wasn't ready and this is quite common with a lot of trapped spirits because they don't accept it and it's completely understandable why they don't. I mean, I wouldn't accept it either. It's, it's an awful thing to have to think that you make one small split second mistake, just a glitch, and next thing you know, you're plunged to your death. And he was really, really grappling with that. The fact that he was taken so young that there were things with family and loved ones that he never, ever got to deal with. 
And that's why he would move on, because he refused. It was almost like he was rebelling against the actual death. But, I mean, it's a funny thing, because this is why I like doing the dead world. It, it, it heals me, in a sense. Look, I had an absolute, and I've spoken about this over and over again, I had an absolute shit upbringing. It was just ridiculous. And you look at the waste of it, and you think, what the fuck, you know, really, come on. But you know what? It makes me able to understand Kevin and his problem. And that's what I eventually ended up talking to him about. Of course, while this is going on, because we've got the lovely paranormal investigator telling us all about the sort of the ghosts in there, and I was interested in what he was saying. I wasn't being an ignorant shit and ignoring everybody, but I just needed to deal with this first. So I sort of backed off and... and, and listened to what Kevin was saying to me and then you know within my head because I wasn't saying this out loud because otherwise people think I'm nuts I just spoke to him about my experience and that sometimes you've just got to look at things and say well shit happens because it does and that's life life is chaos life is just you know fucking get in there and hang on because sometimes it just gets crazy. And I also explained to him that once he passed over, because the one thing I do know about the dead, because they've told me so many times, is if they pass over, they actually can still come back. And I told him that. I said, you can still come back. You can still see what's happening with your family. You can, you can still be involved. It's just going to be different. And he seemed to be okay with that. And he did pass on, which I was really, really relieved. He just stopped talking to me. And I just didn't feel his energy anymore. Um, anyway, let's move on to the next. Okay, let's move on. Birkenhead Priory. It's a really old, old, old church. It's beautiful. And as you can see, it's been pulled down. I can't remember why they took it down. Because it was a while since I've been there and I don't remember. It's probably on Wikipedia. You can probably look up why they did this is the first time I've ever spoken to a dead priest, which was a bit amazing. Um, but it's a bit strange, because you'd think a dead priest would be able to sort of, you know, get this together about, you know, death and... But apparently not. Um, <laughs> he spoke to me about being really upset that this actually beautiful church, as you can see here, was pulled down. I think it had something to do with the war. I'm sorry, I should have looked it up before I started this, but um, I can't remember. Have a look on Wikipedia. I might put, I'll put the Wikipedia link in there, um, in the description box. But he was really hooked and upset and really, really obsessed about the fact that this church was actually taken down and that it was not maintained. Um, really upset to the point that he refused to move on. Um, this was a really weird one because I knew I was dealing with a priest. I mean, I knew. And yet I'm telling him. I mean, it was just really bizarre. I'm a bloody left-hand past practitioner and I'm telling a priest how to die? Oh, God. Anyway. Um, 
I sort of gave him the rundown and I sort of, I questioned him. I said, you know, why are you so obsessed with material possessions? There's a lot of this in the dead world. I pick up so many entities that won't leave because they say, this house is mine. Why has it been turned into flats? And who are all these people? And it's just all over the place, especially in London, because everything gets turned into a flat. Um, but I was really surprised that this was something I was having to do. I almost didn't believe it. But I, every time I sort of tried to ignore it, it would come back. So what I did was I explained the system as I know it, which is that you need to let go. It's a bloody building. It's bricks and mortar. You don't need it anymore. Move on. You know, you're not supposed to be living. You've died. You need to be in the dead world. And, you know, then you just go on from there. I mean, I, I don't pretend to know everything about the dead world. But I know that holding on to material things is ridiculous. Um, I don't know if this one moved on. I really don't. Because I ended up sort of walking away from it a bit because I thought, you know, just felt a bit ridiculous. Why am I dealing with a priest? Come on. You can't expect it. I mean... I don't like the word occult. I pick the word occult up and throw it out the window because I don't like the word hidden. I don't hide what I do. Um, but it's just weird. So I don't know what happened. I did sort of try and explain that you just need to let go. I don't know if it worked. So I don't know if that's still haunted or not anyway. One more to go, and this is a weird one, so let's move on to the next image. Is this the trippiest tombstone you have ever seen in your life? Is this the most amazing? tombstone you have ever seen in your life. I'm going to put a wiki li uh, link in the description box which explains this. This is just amazing. Um, yeah, I didn't really know much about this. It was only afterwards that um, it was apparently, I think it's William Taylor Barry and it's in the St. James Garden in Liverpool, which is in Rodney Street. Now, it was really funny because I'd been out for dinner with all the, the Ghost Club crew and, and we'd had a lovely time. And my hotel that I was staying at was just down the road and I had to walk down this Rodney Street. Now, Rodney Street apparently is the most haunted street in in Liverpool. And these it was really quite funny because I'm leaving this restaurant and they're all... All of these people saying, off you go. No, you go down there. You, you, you go down that street and go to your hotel. Because I think they were all waiting for me to have paranormal events. <laughs> it was just, it was, like, it was just shove me down there. You know, don't, I mean, don't, don't worry if I get done in by some sort of demonic fucking force. Just, just let me go down there so you can talk about it the next day. It was actually quite funny. It was, it was really amusing. Anyway, I did. Now, I knew that this incredible tombstone, I tell you what, I'm a bit jealous. If I die soon, I want a tombstone like that. It's fucking awesome, isn't it? But I'd like a door so people could come in and visit. But anyway, that's just my bizarre wish. This was actually really funny because there was this legend um, about them that, that there was someone buried in the tombstones in that pyramid in a chair with a table playing cards. I don't know why you'd do that, but that's apparently the legend. I doubt that happened. I just probably just put him in the ground and put dirt in him like normal people do. Anyway, this is quite typical. 
and this is only a short one. I was told that around this pyramid there was some sort of entity that was supposed to be Satan. Now I've come across this a lot in the dead. Yeah, you get a lot of really low level um, entities that say they're Satan, but they're not. They're just dicks. And you, you really sort of, once you start working with the devil, you start to feel like you can you can understand the power, the, the power difference. You can sort of feel it. And um, this was the case with this one. As I walked past, um, I got this sort of attitude from this male entity. Now, I knew straight away that he was quite young. I sort of picked up about 17 when he died and he'd been hanging around here in this sort of trying to, I, I think, build up a reputation because, I mean, you've got to remember with the dead, the dead are actually human dead and, and that they will still do things like this. They'll still try and build themselves up to be something that they're not. And um, as I wandered past, I had this sort of, young energy that I knew, I knew he wasn't powerful at all. I knew he was quite um, benign. And he told me he was Satan. And I think I might have said, yeah, and I'm the Easter Bunny or something to that extent, to which I got told to fuck off. <laughs> it's not the first time that's happened. Anyway, I just, I, I, I told him to behave himself and show a bit of respect and start telling people he was something that he was and um, he was not happy, believe me, he was not happy. He even threatened me, he said, if you tell anyone about this, I was like, oh, fuck, I'm scared. <laughs> um, but that was my experience of Liverpool. Um, I still would recommend you go up there. I, I really liked it. And I'm still strange, because it, it's still strange to me, because all my London friends said, why are you going to Liverpool? It's a shithole. It's not a shithole. I really enjoyed it. Anyway, I really want a tombstone like that. It's, I should send this to my children to say that's what I want. Anyway. I think that's about it. I'm done. Um, thanks again for listening. Hope you listen to some more. Bye for now.